What a beautiful day here in Southern Ontario. Although I'm not here to show you all the beauty. Right now, my mission is to show you the beast. Water hemlock. Water hemlock is known botanically as Secuta macula. And this is a very toxic plant that is in the carrot family. As you can tell, it definitely has the features of being in the carrot family. Anyways, this is primarily found in wet, swampy areas. And I don't know why, but a lot of places or websites say that it has a similar appearance to, or the leaf structure to wild parsnips, which is quite different. And actually I'm gonna pause it right here to show you what wild parsnip leaves look like right now. These are the leaves of wild parsnip. Alrighty, the leaves of the water hemlock are all mixed in down there and it's going to be very hard to pull them all out and show you individually, but I've already done that in a little spot over there, so I'm going to show you that shortly. The, you can see the stem is smooth. Let me see if I can... In the bright sun, it's often very difficult to focus and see what you're doing. So I truly hope that I'm able to accomplish that. The stem, as you can see, is smooth. Absolutely no hairs whatsoever. You see that one there, I think you can see. It branches, there's multi-branches that produce three flowers on most of the plants here anyway. If I were to dig deep down in here, I would be able to show you some purple stems. Uh, often the more mature plant will develop some purple blotching. This is late spring right now. So technically this is at its most toxic part of its growth. Whoop. See, always look where you're walking. Yep, that's the rock I just tripped on. <laughs> always know the area you're in. Okay. So here are some leaves where I can see you can get it mixed up with the wild parsnip. But I'm going to put some side by side and put it at the end of this video so you can see truly how much different they are when you look a little bit more closely. All parts of this water hemlock, there we go, there's a pollinator. All parts are toxic, but the roots contain the highest concentration of what is called CQ toxin. And apparently if you ingest as little as two to three centimeters, which is basically one inch, if that, it can theoretically take your life. And the severity of poisoning and latency to symptoms are proportional to the amount of the plant that you have ingested. Although please don't ingest this ever. This is related to poison hemlock, but clinically, or its clinical uh, toxidrome is quite different. So the toxins that are in, let me, I'm trying to get in here. The toxins that are in poison hemlock are actually called Oh gosh, it's called perperidine or perperidine. And this is an alkaloid compound that can really harm the respiratory tract. But we're not talking about the poison hemlock right now. We're talking about the water hemlock, which really is more, I think, more deadly than the water hemlock. And I'll put a link to the water hemlock below so you can see the difference in leaf structure between the two plants. I'm not going to ream through all the poisonous, um, well, the toxin. <laughs> let's, let's start this again. I'm not going to go through all the symptoms of 
poisoning if you ingest this plant. There's far too many. And I'm just going to cut and paste what's in my notes and put it into the description below. You can see how this flower can be somewhat confused with the Queen Anne's Lace, which is edible. This is why if you're a beginner forager, never ever go for anything in the parsley family unless you've been taught by a professional. Now I was mentioning that this can cause death and supposedly if you get past the first eight hours then your survival rate is pretty much guaranteed at that point although there are truly no guarantees when it comes to this plant. Let's see if I can get in a little bit further. Uh, look at it all there. Just lots and lots. Now the first reports of toxic effects from this specific plant occurred back in the late 1600s. And I think actually it was around 1695, 1696. I could be off a little bit there. And the first case of poisoning was in the early 1800s. And there have been a review of deaths reported to poison centers between uh, the mid 80s and mid 90s. And they found in that period of time that there were 19 deaths that were totally attributed to the ingestion of this plant. So once again, if you are new to foraging or even if you think you're really good at foraging, always, always make sure you get to know the poisonous plant so you don't make a mistake because sometimes you don't get that second chance. What I'm gonna do right now is show you what this plant looks like. So I pulled up a root and this root right here, and yes, I'm gonna sanitize my hands like there is no tomorrow. This root right here, what you're looking at, is enough to take your life. This is about two inches long. And there's some of the purple on the inside. And let's see, I think it was better when I held it in the sun like that. The inside of the stem, the leaf structure. As you can tell, it's totally different than Queen Anne's Lace. And there you are, multi-branched. Water hemlock, please get to know this plant. Okay to photograph, never, ever take this plant. And as far as my hands go, I made sure I brought some sanitizing agents. So therefore I am free to forage other items later on this morning. Thank you so much everybody for watching. And please stay safe while you're out there. Please never ever make a mistake when foraging.